you want to take part of a GCW invasion? Of course you do. Today in this how-to video, we're going to tell you exactly what a GCW invasion is and how to do it. Welcome back or welcome front if it's the first time joining us. I am Joshua with Weird Gaming Adventure and like I said, we're going to be teaching you step by step how to do a GCW invasion. So a GCW invasion consists of three stages. The three stages involve one, you have the waiting period. So if you look on your map, you will see X amount of time before the invasion starts. You have a 30 minute construction phase and you have a 30 minute invasion phase. Now the faction that controls a region at the start of the construction phase will play the part of the defenders and the faction that does not will be the attackers. So let's get to the nitty gritty, the construction phase. You are unwise to lower your defenses. In this phase, the defenders build up the city's defenses while the aggressors put together the forces that are going to join in in the siege. Essentially, defending the general will be the part of the defenders. In this video, you see that I am taking part of a invasion in Bastine. I am going to protect the general. Anywhere where the general is, you are going to find field officers. And there's going to be supplies that uh, a supply terminal that can give resources to traders. The traders are going to make resources so that you can build certain parts of construction. Now, any player can use tools and add resources to pylons. You'll find the pylons scattered throughout the city and wherever the invasion is going to be. Now, the traders are the most efficient pylon crafters, obviously, uh, although other professions can take part in this stage if the traders give them the tools. So the traders make the tools, then the traders will give you, whoever's around, give you guys the tools. So normally you'll see, hey, need tools. That means that a trader has tools and you're going to want to trade with them so that they can, uh, that you could be part of the construction phase. So once you get a specific tool, you're going to go to the pylons. And each pylon has a different uh, type of defense ability. And we're going to be speaking mostly from defense at this point. But the same can be said for offense. The reason why I'm doing defense is because that is what I'm taking part of in the video. So you have several different types of pylons. You have soldier pylons, barricade pylons, turret pylons, and tower pylons. Once you get a tool, you will click on one of the pylons. Each time you go through a process, you will suffer what's called building fatigue. And that fatigue is a stackable debuff that increases each time that you click on a pylon. Ideally, you'd like to have an entertainer around so that they can remove the fatigue because eventually it's going to stack so high that you're going to be taking a lot of time building each pylon. Now, each pylon has different tiers of defense or offensive ability. You're going to want to get them as high as you can. For instance, if you have a level 1 a defense, then it's going to be a weak turret or it's going to be a weak barricade. A weak barricade means it'll be easily destroyed. A weak patrol means you're not going to have high combat level NPCs. A uh, level 1 patrol is going to be like a level 60 NPC. A level 3 is going to be a level 90 elite. Obviously, you want to spend as much time as possible in building the important routes up so that you will have a level 90 elite NPC, yada yada yada, emphasis on the yada. So barricade pylons are actually barricades that shield nearby NPCs and players during the attacking phase. They don't have any levels, but their hit points are increased by 5,000 with each resource that's used. You have a turret pylon, which is controlled by an AI and they fire at enemy use units. So each level of those actually increases the damage that each shot goes out. These are really, really important when you have enemy vehicles coming in. They just rip through those. Now, tower pylons give the towers a 200% increased damage buff to all nearby NPCs and vehicles. So they don't actually have levels, but their hit points are increased by 5,000 with each resource that is used. 
Now, when you click on a pylon, you're going to actually get a quest. If you click on it 10 times, you're going to receive tokens. So a quest involves having uh, clicking on it 10 different times. Once you do it 10 times, you get a GCW token. One important thing to remember is that if you are overt, one important thing to remember is that while you are building these turrets and building these barricades and such, if you are special forces, you're going to be receiving double the amount of payout during the construction phase and also double the payout during the next phase as well. So regular combatants get 250 GCW points and five GCW tokens for each quest that they complete, each building quest, while special forces on the other hand are gonna receive 500 GCW points and 10 GCW tokens as well. Obviously you gotta weigh the, the risk and the reward. You got those nasty little spies that are waiting to kick your butt. Yeah, we'll call it butt. At the end of the construction phase, all players who took part are awarded 100 GCW and 10 tokens. Let's get on to the fun part, the invasion. So the invading forces attack along six different paths to make their way into the center of the city. The defending forces are going to stay in their spawn location to fend off all of the enemies. The objective for the attacking side is actually trying to kill the general. The defending faction has to obviously keep the general alive for the full 30 minutes. The general is a combat level 110 boss and has a million health and he has a pretty powerful AOE attack. Essentially there's going to be an invasion that um, in this case like I said we are um, playing in Bestine so we are defending so the offenders is what we will call them in here are going to be the offensive going to be trying to work their way through the specific routes in order to get to the general. Obviously, you are probably going to be facing a lot of regular players in PvP as well, so keep that in mind. Now, if you are defending, you're going to want to click on all of the different patrol points and all of the different things that you have built. So you'll want to click on the barricades and it will pop up with a defense quest. You're going to want to uh, click on the turret and the tower as well. Every single time you kill either a enemy NPC, an enemy vehicle, you're going to get additional points after you get 10 of them. Now there's also profession specific missions. So each profession has missions that provide GCW points and tokens that run alongside the main attack and defense mission. So like for instance with the construction missions, uh, completing these gives your uh, faction small advantages in the battle and can be enough to turn the tide of, of that invasion. So to take part in these missions, a player must either be combatant or special forces. So there's entertainer missions, medic missions, traitor missions, as we mentioned earlier, smuggler, spy, and just general combat missions. Now the player that taken part of the winning faction is awarded 1000 GCW and 40 tokens along with all of the other GCW and the tokens that you earn for completing the invasion and the construction mission in the process. So the players that are in the losing faction get 100 GCW and, and 10 tokens as well. The number of tokens and GCW points rewarded for the winning faction and the losing faction are the same for both combatants and special forces. This is an awesome event and it runs every two hours. It's pretty much running at all times at some part of the planet. It's a really good way of getting up in rank in either Imperial or Rebel faction. It's a wonderful way of getting GCW, uh, getting tokens, and those tokens can be converted into some incredible, incredible gear and whatnot. So. I recommend that everybody get involved in GCW, especially if you haven't done a whole lot of PvP. It's a really an easy way to learn how to interact with groups, how to get started 
in the PvP setting. It's nice also to have a little bit of camaraderie. You get to know your fellow combatants right alongside with them. So jump down in the comments section and let me know if you take part in GCW. Let me know if you have actually made your way all the way to the top rank in either Rebel or Imperial. If you made it to the top rank in Rebel, hit plus R in the comment section or Imperial hit plus I. And uh, let me know what you think about the video. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's good. If not, um, I apologize in advance. I'm Joshua once again with Weird Gaming Adventure. If you like this and enjoy all of our other Star Wars Galaxies videos and for the videos that are soon to come, consider subscribing. And I shall see you all, all you scruffy looking nerf herders, in the next video.